In this video, I'm going to let you know why I bought the iPhone Pro. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. Welcome to Studio Live today. This is a bit of a uh, special event here because I've just upgraded, updated my phone. And what I'm going to do is take you through a quick summary and overview of the reason why I eventually decided on the iPhone 12 Pro after probably a couple of months of ooing and ahhing. And then we're going to dive into some more details and uh, answer any questions that you may have. If you're here live on Facebook or YouTube, hello. We will be diving into the content in just about 30 seconds. But if you want to play along at home, you can do so because you can jump over to studiolivetoday.com slash iPhone. That is my complete, well, my quick guide to uh, buying an iPhone. If you're a creator, if you're into music, if you're into video, if you're into creating stuff and you want to get an iPhone, that is where I suggest you go. And if we jump over here, you can see what you get over there. So here's my iPhone buyer's guide. I've just updated it for February 2021. At the top there is this video that you're watching right now i've then got my recommended iphones whether you're after something on the budget range something mid-range with a bit better performance or even something at the higher end we've got uh, links to all of those and also over there i've got my handy dandy comparison chart which if it works Hooray, has just been updated. This is a PDF file that compares every single iPhone model that has ever been created. And this is the stuff that you won't get in the Apple marketing hype. So you get information about what versions of GarageBand it's gonna run, because that's important to me. If it has a headphone jack, sadly very few do these days. The connection there, they're all lightning these days, but also the processor, how much RAM, what different storage options you have. And over on the side here, the all important A numbers, because every iPhone, phone than I've had that you buy actually has a little A number that's uh, here on, now where's this one on this one? This iPhone doesn't have one. It's making a liar of me. They used to have an A number. <laughs> <laughs> you used to be able to see it right on here. You can actually get into the settings and look at what those A numbers are. And they are on the back of your iPads for some reason. Just as I said that, I'm like, do they still have them there? Maybe not. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to jump in and uh, take a look at this. As I open up my iPhone 12 Pro, I'm going to explain to you the reasons behind why I bought it and uh, what the difference is. And if you're in the market for getting something. But here's the other thing. The, the links that we had on the page that I just showed you there... It's actually a really great time to buy a refurbished iPhone 11 or even an iPhone 10s. I've been using this iPhone 10s here for a very long time. I got it pretty late in the piece just before the iPhone 11 came out, uh, but I've had it for over two years now, but hence why I'm out of contract with it. And uh, yeah, I was ready to upgrade, but it did take me a while to decide which direction to go. So if that's any of the things that you're thinking about, then join me as we uh, we break into this one. Uh, hello to the folks who are here live. We've got Timothy, Gary Hubs, Ricky Neal. Uh, the uh, Desolate Mornings here, uh, Tom Richel, hello to you, Jade Starr, Ed Zielinski, Bradley Stetson, uh, and anyone else that uh, may be here and has questions. We'll get to a Q&A section in a little bit of time, but for now, without any further ado, uh, let's break into this one, shall we? And let's use the, uh, the Apple last little clip, little tab that we have there. There's some ASMR plastic for you folks. There you go. And uh, we're in the box. Apple do not spare any expense on the box. They make sure that you have a good box opening experience. I've actually heard that there is something to do with the weightiness that this is supposed to be. When you do that, it's supposed to feel like a certain way. I don't know what that way is, but there you go. There's the inside of our box. There's the phone. And I'm instantly gratified that I didn't go with the Max because here's the thing. The biggest decision I had at the moment was whether to go the 12 Pro or the 12 Pro Max. I went the 12 Pro because the I, I felt a few. I went in and started touching them. And this seems the biggest that I want. I was actually so close. If the Pro came in a mini form factor, I probably would have got that. So I went for the graphite, as you can see there. I didn't go the dark blue, the new color. I didn't want the newness. I wanted this to match my <laughs> iPad because I'm a weird dude like that. But uh, yeah, let's peel off the, the front. And there we go. Ready to accept my fingerprints on the front there. A big piece of glass. Now... 
The this uh, here in Australia, I think the retail cost on this one is twenty one ninety nine, um, which is just a ridiculous amount of money to pay for a phone. Like most people, I uh, have a plan and I pay it off over two years. So I think my monthly comes in around the sixty dollar marks for my phone. And again, because I live my life, the reason I needed a new phone is I live my life on my phone. And every video that you see edited on this channel has been edited on here. All of my GarageBand projects, a lot of those I actually edit and uh, and record and do a lot of stuff on my iPhone all of my social media every time you put a comment on a youtube video and i'm replying to it it's on this phone so my dirty fingerprints have been on this bit of glass for many many uh, many many hours and now they're going to be on this bit of glass and yeah, every time i pick it up i'm just like it, it is it's almost too big it's just in it's just big enough for one hand oper operation if you've got bigger hands like me uh, again if it came in a mini I probably would have gone with that uh, but I wanted the pro for a couple of reasons and in fact why don't we jump over and start talking about those because the easiest way for me to tell you the reasons is to look at the comparison chart that I uh, have together over here on my page Oop, we've just we've removed it we'll add it back in there we go so if we go to the comparison chart the number one reason I went with this is the size I didn't want the max because of the size now the benefit of the max the pro max is it's basically exactly the same interior except the camera the camera has the new fancy dolby uh stupid super stabilization stuff that is only on the pro max and i nearly got it for that because i do shoot a lot of video with my phone but eventually i decided no i can't sacrifice that because again because i walk around a lot and i needed that one-handed operation even though it's only the difference between 6.1 and 6.7 if you've been into an apple store or somewhere and you've held one versus the other you'll be able to uh, very very quickly tell the difference in the size that you have and it's just it's not comfortable so that's why i went with this one if we come back over to the guide here now sorry we're gonna have to zoom in a little bit so we can see i know this is probably going to be small especially if you're watching on a screen but right down the bottom here we have the iphone 12 range so the 12 mini the 12 the 12 pro and the 12 pro max from a performance point of view they are all using the exact same chip so they're all using the a14 bionic at 2.99 gigahertz and a hexa core so i think it's got two high performance cores and four day-to-day -day, <laughs> everyday cores but the difference is the storage size and the memory so the reason the pros are a pro is that they have six gigabytes of memory rocking in this little piece of glass and, and uh, aluminium and the size difference. So you can get up to 512, uh, not 152 as I've written there. So there's, there's a correction to make up to 512 gigabytes, which is what I got in the end. Um, I had discussions and thank you to all the folks, by the way, I've hit up a lot of you. We've had discussions on various different forums. And I eventually decided that it was worth the extra cost to get the additional size. Now, that doesn't mean that for most average run-of-the-mill creators, you're going to need 512 gigabytes. 128 is actually quite a lot, especially for music production. But when you get into video, when you start shooting a 4K video or even editing 1080p video, you're getting into gigabytes and gigabytes per file. So 128 can fill up pretty quickly. And if you were getting something like the iPhone 12 or the 12 mini with 64, that's very much at that sort of consumer end of the uh, the size. So size does matter when it comes to this sort of stuff because it's just going to mean the convenience you're going to get being able to store your stuff. And that's what I wanted. I wanted the convenience of not having to bounce my projects around, not having to bounce my video files and audio files around. Uh, and yes, as Russ here, in the, it says size does matter after all. Uh, Emobot9000 has a great tip here. And yes, we will get into any questions or comments as we go along. Keep your boxes, people. Yeah, especially your Apple boxes. They they stay together. I'm stuck to it. They stay together really nicely. So keep your boxes because if you want to resell them or store your phones over time, then uh, you can do that. And it's, uh, it's an easy way to go. <laughs> Emobot9000 also says, the camera on my 12 looks better than real life. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about that. We'll talk about cameras and things in a moment as we go through. Now, around about this time of any sort of unboxing video, I always say that gear is not the answer. Uh, as I said, it took me a long time to work out that this is what I needed. And I used this. I ran the iPhone XS into the ground to the point where it's just getting to the point where the battery's not lasting a full day. So that means that, that's a warning sign. And it's just not quite got quite enough grunt and horsepower to do all the tasks that I'm throwing at it all the time. So that's why the, the 12 Pro with the uh, the six gigabytes of RAM and the A14 Bionic 
is what I eventually decided to get. But do not let lack of gear get in the way of your creativity. And don't think, as I said, don't think that you have to get the latest and greatest because now is actually a really good time. And again, we'll jump over to the guide here. The reason I've got these here, it's actually a great time to buy an iPhone 8 or 10 or 11 or 7 or 6S. I still have a 6S and I still love it. I don't have it in my pocket here. It's out there. I still have a 6S and I love it. Why? headphone jack for starters, but it still runs iOS 14.4. And if you're using it for audio or even for like basic video stuff, it still does a fantastic job. So what I'm showing here is, yeah, you can click through and check out some of the, the older, but still really good iPhones. So you don't need to have an iPhone 12. You can actually go for uh, something a little bit uh, older and you'll actually get a really good deal because whilst suckers like me are paying, you know, upwards of $2,000 for the latest and greatest, you can actually get some Something much better. Uh, let's turn it on, shall we? By the way, in the in the box, what do we get? This is a bit weird, right? We get a lightning to USB-C cable, but no power brick. So yeah, I, I probably just made the assumption that everyone knows that, that Apple have decided that everyone's got enough power bricks to, to do this. Here's the problem though, I only have one USB-C power adapter and that's used for my iPad Pro. So I legitimately have nothing to plug this into <laughs> right now. So I will be plugging it into USB-A and I have plenty of lightning to USB-A cables, but hey, I'll keep this as a spare and uh, to, to the uh, the tips from Emobot before, put everything back in the case. Everything, including the little screen covery thing, put all that back in the box, seal up the box and store that away in your uh, Apple cupboard O boxes. Yeah, everyone's got an Apple cupboard of boxes here or a cupboard of Apple boxes. Either way, I sure as heck do. All right. Let's turn it on. Now, I always have to remember how to actually turn these on because some, so you got the power button or the, no, what do they just call it? They call it the side button. It's not even a power button. So I'm not sure if you just hold that one on or you have to hold the other side as well. Uh, I know to turn it off, you've got to hold both. There you go. It's turned on. There's your Apple logo doing its thing. We'll, uh, we'll get this set up because Apple are actually quite good with their setup these days. I should should being the operative word, be able to just stick these two together, let them have a chat for a while while we continue to chat. So, uh, hello, there you go. There's that Apple hello that we always get. The, uh, <laughs> Pete, is, Pete is rich. Uh, no, as, as I've explained at the start, I, I am paying this off month by month over the next 24 months. So, uh, yeah, I, I was not someone out there on launch day lining up and paying cash for my iPhone 12. I can assure you of that. Uh, let's, uh, let's come in. Shall, which language should we go with? No, I don't, don't even know what language that says. So we'll flick up on there. We're going to tap on English. We'll see if we can get it there. You won't be able to see it very well on this camera. I didn't think this through too well. Uh, select my country or region. We're going to go Australia because that's where I live and that makes sense. And uh, we'll go through and get this set up. Uh, oh, we've got set up a new iPhone. I'll, I'll open my, it's, my iPad has popped up and said, uh, we're, we use your Apple ID to set up your new phone. There you go. I've got it on here. So this is the sort of thing you do. Uh, it'll pop up like this and it'll have that there. I'll, I can't zoom in on that because it's got... My email address. Oh, even everyone's already got my email address. I don't really, I don't really want wonder why. Uh, so let's uh, hit the continue button. So we should just be able to hit continue on my iPhone 10s, and boom, it comes over here. Now, what you do if you've never done this before, you line up. Won't be able to sort of show you, but you line up in the little camera thing here on this little blue dot. And it basically confirms the phone that you're setting up. So we'll do that here now. We'll go boom, and it's done it. And it said, yep, finishing on the new phone. So now it's asking for the passcode of the other phone, which I will pop in here. Oh, this screen does feel nice. Uh, I didn't, I, I was worried about the, the size of the screen. And, and by the way, we've still got the big notch. We've still got the, the rounded corners. I don't like any of that, but hey. What can you do? They, they don't make them any different anymore. Unless I go back to the old iPhone 5S, which I might do one day. Uh, so that's doing, it's going to do a few few minutes to activate and do its thing now. And we'll, uh, we'll leave that there and let it do its thing. I did, of course, uh, go out and buy a screen protector. So I just bought the cheap Harvey Norman brand one here, which, well, cheap, $30 screen protector. You could buy $70 screen protectors made of just like, I don't know, baby seal tears. I don't know what they make them of. Uh, and a and a cheap uh, a cheap case as well. Um, now the uh, they did send me. I won't get this set up here now because it'll involve a lot of carrier based stuff. But my carrier Vodafone, uh, not sponsored. I kind of recommend them just because they're the cheapest, and I use them here in Adelaide. Uh, so they sent me a new SIM card, and I don't know why that is because I should. Uh, it's compatible with my old SIM card, but. It's a new plan, so I'm going to go with it. And uh, yeah, and the case, which I bought a biodegradable case made of plants. So I'll let you know how that turns out too. <laughs> it could be interesting.
<laughs> we'll see how all of that goes. Uh, so oh, the phone keeps going off. Maybe don't turn off while you're actually setting yourself up, phone. All right, we're going to do the face ID thing. Uh, we'll hit continue. Uh, it should... Oh, how to set up face ID. Why do I have to set it up again? Position your face in the frame. All right. Move your head slowly to complete the circle. Oh, I haven't done this in, the, in forever. My face ID is going to have me uh, wearing headphones. <laughs> uh, face ID complete. Face scan complete. Move your, oh, it's got to do it again. It said complete, and then it said let's do it again. Uh, second face ID. Can I put a second face? All right, so I did it twice. That's cool. Uh, yeah, take, I should probably take the headset off. My face ID, every time I'm not wearing the headset now, it'll be, uh, it'll be a problem. So now you get the transfer data thing. We can either do it download from the cloud or we can transfer directly from the phone with all my data. I'm going to do that. It says it's going to take about an hour and 45 minutes. I have a fair amount of data on here. So I didn't, I didn't plan to do anything with my phone for a while. And I suggest if you're setting up a new phone, you don't want to go anywhere for a while or need to do anything because it will take quite some time to, to transfer it across. So I'm going to hit the transfer from iPhones. I'm going to agree to the terms and conditions and hit agree. And then it's going to go settings from my other phone. Yes, continue. Keeping your phone up to date. It'll probably just turn on automatically. I'm, I'm just pressing continue on all these because I go back afterwards and, and do all of my things. So we'll just hit continue. Not going to share my audio recordings with Apple. And I'm not going to share my iPhone analytics. I don't know why, but that's just how I roll. And now, of course... We have to download the latest software update. So we're going to download and install iOS 14.4. I have to agree to more terms and conditions. I have to download uh, over Wi-Fi. Yes, I will do that. And it's going to go and do its thing. So it's requested the update. It's doing it. It's going to sit there and do its own thing for a while. So let's jump back a step now and go back to, while that's doing its thing, I'll keep an eye on it there, but we'll go back to talking about where I got to and why I made this decision in the end. So Apple made their big announcement, their big new iPhones, and went, wow, everything's new and shiny, and what should you actually do? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, Timothy, lots to do. It's It should be easy. Like They say, oh, it's simple, just, just a one-touch thing, and now it keeps wanting to turn off. So I have to be watching it and make sure I turn it back on. Uh, yeah, so, so this is what I was doing. I was looking at all these and I'm like, okay, so there's four different types of iPhones now. Not only do I have to decide whether I get a new iPhone, but these days I have to actually decide which one to get. Uh, yeah, so this is what I went to. And uh, thank you, Maury. I know. Uh, enjoy life, Pete. Time passes quickly. Congrats on your new toy. And look, it, it really just is. Uh, I really wanted to make this video not to just say, look at my shiny new phone, but to talk through this stuff and to make sure that you, that I share what I went through and the fact that I don't actually, um, yeah, I don't, I don't make these decisions lightly and neither should you. So iPhone, there are two different types. There is the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro. If you missed the start of the show, I told you about the difference in specs. The main difference in spec is that the Pro series have six gigabytes of RAM and they have larger storage capacity. There really isn't that much. Oh, and the camera. There really isn't that much different. You get the third camera on the back there, which I, I still have. I still don't think I've used the second camera on this one at all. So having a third camera didn't really do it for me. I just want one good quality camera. But uh, yeah, I got the third camera on there and that, that's it. So the camera, the RAM and the storage capacity. Apart from that, it's pretty much uh, the same. So what that means is similar to the iPads and similar to buying um, the new Macs, the Mac M1s, you can get the base level and still get away with something good. And this is where I was so tempted to get the iPhone 12 mini because I just love that size. I actually think that this size, this this size, the 6.1 inch is actually too big. But you can see there, 5G, A14 Bionic, and from $699 for the iPhone 12 mini, if we click the buy button here, we'll take a look through at what some of your options are if it's going to come up. <laughs> See, I'm using, this is using all of my bandwidth now. So I realized that that's a bad idea because now it's going to probably impact the stream here as we go through. So iPhone 12, you can go the mini, the 5.4 inch display or the iPhone 12, which has this one, the 6.1 inch display, same as the iPhone 12 Pro. And it's a $699 or $799. So really, do you want a bit more screen real estate? you go for the bigger one. If you come back to here, these are the things that I talk about what to look for in a phone. So you can use the chart I have there, but screen size is probably, you're going to be looking at and touching this screen for hopefully a long time, two, three, four years, if you're like me and you're away, a long way between updates, then you need to make sure the screen size is right for you. Now, if you can't, uh, if you can't get into a store at the moment to check the screen size, 
just cut out a piece of cardboard and hold it in your, I know that sounds ridiculous, but work out the dimensions uh, and then cut out a piece of cardboard and hold that in your hand. And that's where I got with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I was like, I cut out a piece that was the slightly bigger one. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to hold that in one hand. So I didn't. Uh, so screen size is super important. Do you want the plus size or the max size? Do you want the mini size if you've got smaller hands and you want that one-handed operation? Or do you want to go for the medium size? By the way, is it ridiculous that the medium size is 6.1 inches? You remember the iPad minis are only 7.9 inches. Like the, the difference between our small iPads and our large phones is almost uh, is almost different. And uh, yeah, so as Joe says here, my eyes say, say bigger screen. So yeah, again, for accessibility, if you want to have a bigger screen for that, then I would recommend the larger one. It's the one regret I have with my iPad. I got the iPad Pro 11 inch. The 12.9 inch is um, is much uh, much bigger and uh, you get much more screen real estate. So screen size does matter when it comes to the screen. Size does matter when it comes to storage. So what I've said here, uh, and I actually updated this recommendation, but even this might be slightly out of date. I said recommend at least 64 gigabytes, 128 or 256 if your budget can stretch. And if you're a madman or mad person, then 512 is what I got here. Mostly because, again, I do video editing. If you don't edit video on your phone, you probably don't need 512. If you're just creating, even if you're using GarageBand and iSymphonic and all of the different uh, all, all of the different music creation tools, then yeah, I don't think you'll need 512. But 128 or 256, again, if your budget can can afford it, then go for that. And remember, iPhone 11 with 256 might be a better buy for you right now than an iPhone 12 with only 128 or 64. So consider that your longevity, but also the the storage. Uh, so the speed, the processor, and the RAM, so the faster is the better for music production. Go for the best you can afford. And again, use what you have. I've been using, like I, I was using this, and prior to my 10s, I was using my 6s for over four years. Like the first, first three years of this channel, I actually was using an iPhone 5s, and then eventually I got an iPhone 6s for work, and I started using that one. And that was all I had up until this. And I was using an I, uh, iPad Air 2. So it's only been in recent times as I've continued and because I do this full time now that I've actually started using this gear. So I want to make that, I know I'm going to labor that point, but every time I do a video, video like this, I want to make sure that I'm getting that point across, which is you don't need to buy things. You don't need to use gear. You don't need to upgrade to uh, the latest and greatest all the time. But if you're considering it, weigh up the options and think about it clearly before you go ahead. Uh, and finally, the connections. <laughs> Uh, see, you can see how long ago I wrote this. Do you want a headphone jack and lightning port? All f iPhones from iPhone 7 have only a lightning port. So yeah, you don't have the option to have a headphone jack on anything above the 6S. And there are still 6S out there that you can buy. Let's, let's see if these links are still working here from a while ago. So if we click through on this Amazon link, yeah, okay. Oh, look, there's dogs. Pete needs to uh, fix these. So apparently whatever I was linking to there is no longer there. Oh, there's some cute dogs though. Tell you what, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sad that I get to see cute dogs. Uh, so my, my job after this show, and if you're watching on the replay, see there's the seven. So it may just be that there's none available. Yeah, see that's currently unavailable. So they're getting harder to find. The six S's and the sevens are getting harder to find, but they're still out there if you search around. And if you, if you go through those links onto Amazon here, you can then start searching around. So if you are, if you were, in fact, let's just try this iPhone six S. I'm just intrigued as to see whether there are any six S's that you can still buy. Yeah, see, I reckon we're at the point now where even Amazon, it's all sevens and above, isn't it? So I might have to remove those success links entirely. If you can find a success, if you're on Gumtree or uh, or Craigslist or somewhere like that, in good condition, I think they're going to become such collector's items because they are. They're the last good quality iPhone that will still have a headphone jack. So I'm thinking, uh, yeah, I'm thinking that that will be something that will go away soon. You won't be able to pick those up anymore. Uh, but, 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 but headphone jack stuff up hardware, yeah, uh, or the headphone adapter. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not a fan of the dongle. Dongle life is not the life for me. But I'm kind of forced to uh, to be there. All right, where are we at with this? We're verifying the update now. So we're at the point where it's verifying the update. And uh, once it's verified and installed iOS 14.4, it will start the low and arduous process of uh, of copying everything across. And it keeps it keeps turning itself. Oh, maybe it meant to turn itself off that time. It's gone blank now. That's always a good sign. I 
think it's probably just resetting itself. But I don't know why it goes to that such that that saver mode. Oh, the Apple logo flashed up. I don't know why it goes to that um, light saving mode when it's doing all of its stuff. This would be this would be hilarious. Oh, there you go. There's your Apple, your Apple with your little thing. How funny would it be if <laughs> if live live on this show and I do this and it just bricks it and it just doesn't work at all? That will uh, that could be amusing. Uh, let's uh, actually we've got folks here that, that while, while we're doing this and while we uh, we get this set up, yeah. If you do have any questions or if you do have any things, if you're considering something, if you want any advice or information, or if like Russ, you want to uh, reminisce about the old classic ones uh, like the old Nokia's. Uh, let's just come back because I think uh, I think a few folks have been. Yeah, so Robin the Space Boy says, I wonder if anyone still has a Nokia. Nokia, we, we called them Nokia here. I think it's Nokia is the actual uh, pronunciation in, are they a Swedish company? Finnish? Finnish, actually, aren't they? They're from Finland. Uh, but yeah, the Nokia, 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 whatever you want to call them. Uh, yeah, the, what was it? The uh, 6110 was the classic, wasn't it? Uh, Thomas says, my mum still has the Nokia 1100. Uh, yep. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the, the 6110. I actually had the 3210. So there was a 5110 was the very, original one that's the the classic design I don't, I don't know where we're going with this i will get back on track in a moment but uh yeah we, i wanted to get all the information there up front so that we could uh, we could have a bit of fun and, and chat about this but if you go back the 5110 if you didn't have one you knew someone who did and especially the yellows were kind of the best so take a look at this this is this is the 5110 yeah everyone remember that the classic 5110 was it, and I think that might have even been the first to have Snake on it, uh, the first uh, mobile phone. Mine was the 3210, which was the step up where, <gasps> look at that. It didn't even have, well, that's the 3310, 3210. Didn't even have the antenna. It was the first phone, first mainstream phone to not have an antenna. It was all inside there. And uh, from then on, we've, uh, we've removed our antennas from our phones forever and of course there was the old motor rollers and everything that that uh, that were started it all uh <laughs> warren buffett still has a flip phone never held him back yeah uh exactly uh, Gustav Fett. Uh, yeah, so we're into, we're into question time now. So if you do have questions, uh, let me know. Drop them in the in the chat here live. And if you're watching on the replay, uh, don't worry. You can leave your comments and I will be here after the video uh, commenting on them. Probably replying to your comments on this very phone if and when it actually finishes uh, installing everything and copying everything across. The other phone's still sitting here going, uh, yeah, we're, we're just still waiting. It says, waiting for software update. We'll, we'll transfer it as soon as we can. So, uh, yeah, that'll be my morning. Uh, while I'm recording vocals, which is my next video, we'll be waiting for that. Uh, so I think the Mini is good for people who can use it as a camera and phone because they have an iPad or something like that. Yeah, look up. And again, because the Mini, don't think that the Mini is a cut, it's a stripped down version of the, the 12. It's just a smaller screen. Every other spec is identical. It's just a smaller screen. So if you want a smaller screen size, go the Mini. And it's the same with the Pro Max. The Pro Max is slightly different because of that camera. And again, I, I just had to make the call in the end to say I couldn't do the size. If the Pro had the same camera as the Pro Max, I would have gone with that. Uh, Russ says, the best phone I had was a Panasonic GD55. was so small just, just to hang it around your neck. <laughs> yeah, I loved the, uh, oh, what was it? It was the 8310, I reckon, was the Nokia. I don't, again, welcome to the history of Nokia phones. Uh, but yeah, check this out. Um, if we go to this. Yeah, look how small these suckers were. Like these 8310s, they were getting so small that you could barely touch them. But again, you only had a number keypad on there and like an up, down, left, right. But they were getting tiny to the ridiculous point where, uh, and the joke was back in the sort of 90s and uh, coming into the early 2000s that, oh my goodness, phones are going to become so small that uh, you'll lose them. They'll be like the size of a matchbook and you'll just drop them in your, in your bag and you'll lose them forever. Uh, yeah, it turns out not so much. We went exactly the other way. We went to giant hunks of glass and aluminium instead. So go figure. Uh, <laughs> uh, Robin says, I had a flip phone when I was six, but I only used it to message my cousin. Yeah, was anyone else really cool with the predictive text? Like back in the day with the number pad, putting in the, the predictive text and using the number pad. Remember, you have to go A, B, C, D, E, F, and then Nokia brought out that predictive one, which, uh, which made it easier remember oh memories uh thomas still uh, have my iphone 5c and using an 8 now yeah I've, I've still got the uh the 5s which one of my daughters has and one of my six s's that my wife had the other daughter has so yeah we we're recycling down the chain 
Uh, right, we're reconnecting. So it now says reconnecting. So it's reconnecting back to the other phone. And now it's preparing to transfer. And then it's going to do its thing. So then we should be pretty much set up. And obviously, uh, it did say an hour 45 minutes. I won't keep you here for an hour 45 minutes. But uh, yeah, we will. I will return. Because what I usually do with these things is I don't do a review straight away. Because you can't. It's like the speakers I have. I bought new, um, new monitor speakers. I'm not going to review them for a while. Because I need to actually use them. You don't want to hear from me what it looks like you want to hear what it sounds like and the same with a phone you don't want me to just unbox it and go it looks shiny you want me to use it and say this is what i like about it this is annoying me this is good this is bad all that sort of stuff so that's what we will be doing uh <laughs> dr zordas remember how cool it was when you got a trim phone oh how times have changed uh, yeah, we got our house got uh, when our house got a trim phone. Yeah, so it's it, it, it's it's amazing how things have gone. Uh, Robin says mine has a headphone thing. I hope it does become a collectible item. <laughs> Probably just seen as crap. Yeah, well that's it. Uh, I also have my 4s lying around. That is in uh, in my cupboard somewhere. I've also got an iPad too hanging around somewhere. All right, now it. <sighs> It won't let me in here anywhere to tell it to not. Maybe I need to plug it in. That's probably a good idea. Or I'll put I'll put it on my um wireless charging dongle place over here. So I'll just stick it on my little uh, wireless pad. Then hopefully it'll stop turning off. <laughs> uh, Timothy remembers the original Motorola back in the day. Uh, the first oh the Motorola MicroTac they were great as well. They were amazing. Uh, a bit off topic, but what's the best option to get into music production as a beginner? I mean, I'm going to be a little biased here, but GarageBand would be what I would say because that's what I use and uh, that's what I recommend and that's what this channel is all about. But I think it is actually one of the best platforms for getting started because it's so simple and so easy to pick up and get cracking with. So, uh, yeah. I would uh, I would get into that, and as Timothy says, yeah, watch watch the videos here on the channel. Learn about GarageBand. Learn what to do. It still keeps turning itself on and off. Craziness. Uh, <laughs> we'll continue on. Um, I think we have Celine. Hello to you. I could text without looking with the old texting. Yeah, you just use your fingers and you work out where that little knob was on your on your five, and then you'd know. You'd just be like, it was a skill. It was an art form. A question here from Mori P. Uh, the new phone powerful enough to stream GarageBand iOS to a smart TV without playing while playing live instruments with absolutely no lag? That's a really good question, uh, Mori. And I was hoping if we could get it to the point where it was set up, we'll, we'll have to return and do that on a future video. But I will. I'll use the mirroring and I'll mirror it up to the screen here to show some of that. And I will be doing some of those sort of testing. So yeah, if you've got a Lightning to HDMI adapter. The, the problem's been that if you were trying to use it through a TV screen, like a larger screen, it would often have some lag and some latency, meaning if you're trying to play a touch instrument, you are hitting it and hearing the sound half a second later, and that's never a good thing. So I don't know is the short answer to that one, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely find out, and we'll definitely continue on. Oh, there you go. Uh, so we are transferring, transferring data from XS, and it's going to send it from my 10s called XS over to this one. Time remaining is estimating. So uh, we'll, we'll see what the time remaining, what it thinks it's going to be. And uh, remember, it'll transfer the data, but then it doesn't actually transfer any of uh, any of your apps. You then have to let it sit there because it downloads all the apps from the cloud. So uh, it will go through and do all of that, and then we'll see what it's like. And we may have to return and do another video in a couple of days to uh, get onto that. Uh, let's come on down. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Dr. Zorda said I used to go to car auctions a lot in the dealers. Yeah, remember when uh, when yeah, dealers or like um, real estate agents were the first ones to really get into having like a portable phone or a car phone? Those phones are just like in their car on their handset. Now you get arrested for holding a handset while driving. But in those days, yeah, you'd just pick up your phone and you'd be wearing your 80s suit and your slick back hair and you'd be like, yeah, I just closed the deal on the Simpson place. Uh, look at how cool I am on my phone. And then, yeah, anyway, uh, I don't know where we're going with that. <laughs> Gary Hub says, my battery on my 6S has just gone to schnizzle. Uh, I'm pushing it pretty hard though. Yeah, and um, actually I was talking with, uh, with folks just yesterday about this. Apparently Apple have reduced. So it used to be it would cost you about $200 to get a battery replacement in your phone. Apparently now it's about $40 or $50 US and about $60 here in Australia. So if you do have an older phone, a 6S, and the only problem is the battery, in fact, I should probably do that with my 10S as well. Because this one is still a good phone, it just has a dodgy battery. Because I've just burnt it out for the last two years. And when I say burnt it out, I'm literally using it out in sunlight. It's 38 
degrees here in Adelaide. I'll go for a walk and this thing will get so hot that it shuts down. Like, have you ever seen that screen? There's legitimately a screen that says your phone is too hot. We're shutting it down for its own good. And it just goes away. All right, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll let this screen go off just because just it, it keeps going to dull and then going off. So it says around two hours, which I don't doubt. So we'll let that actually happen because I'm just interested to see will it keep transferring if I don't keep tapping it to turn it back on. We'll find out. Uh, I'll, I'll let it go completely off and then bring it back and see if it's continuing to do its thing. Uh, Salid says, Gary, my 6S basically became a landline before I upgraded that bad boy. Yeah, uh, exactly. My my 6S, the one that I gave to my daughter, is a landline. Like, it needs to be plugged in. If you unplug it, you can literally see the percentage numbers going down as you go through. So it's, uh, it's quite crazy. Um, and uh, Tom says, the battery on my 7S Plus only lasts a few hours now off charge. Not good. Yeah, they're pretty notorious for that. But uh, yeah, you can get them replaced and replaced quite cheaply. We've got about another 10 or 15 minutes here just to talk through and to finish off on this. If you're just joining us here live and you want to play along at home, jump over to studiolivetoday.com slash iPhone. If you're in the market for a new iPhone or you want to find out what I have to say about using an iPhone as a creator, then this is the place to go. So I've got my recommendations there, including the sixes and the sevens that we've been talking about. Don't go earlier than a 6S. It won't run iOS 14. So if it's a straight six or if it's a 5S, it's not going to run iOS 14, therefore it's not going to run the latest version of GarageBand, and you're going to have a whole bunch of other issues as well. Uh, in the middle of the range there, you've got your 8s and your 10s, and then your best performance these days, of course, is your 11s, and now your 12s. So you can go and check all of those out, and the comparison chart that's here. And I think uh, eventually I'm going to have to retire some of the iPhones, because I've got them there for nostalgic value, but the original OG iPhone 1 that's at the very top there, I just like looking at the numbers there. I like looking that it was a 30 pin connector, had a headphone jack, it was running an ARM processor. So it was before Apple actually started creating uh, like the, the A series. So the first A processor was in the iPhone 4S, but the iPhone, the iPhone 3G, 3GS and iPhone 4 all ran the ARM processors. And look at that RAM, 128 megabytes of RAM. 128 megabytes. Uh, at the 3GS, they added, they doubled that to 256, and then the 4 doubled it again to 512. And uh, the storage, 4 gigabytes, up to a whopping 16 gigabytes of storage. So those early days uh, were interesting time. My first iPhone was the 4S, which is this one here, and uh, still had the 30-pin connector. It was the last 30-pin iPhone. It was running a, a super fast 1 gigahertz dual-core processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, and was 8 to 64 gigabytes. I had the 32, no, I didn't, I had the 16. I had the 16 gigabyte iPhone 4S. So yeah, very, very different times um, back in the day. But uh, yeah, if you're looking for an iPhone, if you're in the market, and you want to get all that information, the guide is free, studiolivetoday.com slash iPhone, and you can get it. All right, the data is still transferring. We are, we've just opened it, by the way. Again, if you're joining us, we unboxed uh, the unboxed. And look, it is still working. So it does, the screen goes off, but it's still transferring between the two. So I can just let this go. I can leave this on charge and let it do its thing. It is saying an hour still, so we're not going to be able to get that. If, you watch the if you're watching live and you watch the next one, I'm going to be recording vocals, but it'll probably pop up during that. So we'll take, a, we'll take an aside and, and look at that one as well. Uh, let's see what other folks have got to, to say. So Jade, I saw you had a comment a moment ago and now I've lost you. Uh, there we are. No, we're not there. Yeah. So my, my success is my alarm clock these days. Yeah. You can repurpose old phones to do that. And the, the good thing is that, yeah, they'll, they'll still do things. Um, and if you, especially if you're creating music and you've got a home studio and you've got a second phone and you leave it plugged in, well, it can be your second camera. You can use it as a webcam for things. You can use it as a garage band only like device you leave there. You can use it as a music player. Just plug in. If it's got a headphone jack, just plug that in through your sound system and just use it for Spotify. Like there's, there's a bunch of things that you can actually do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Tom says I can also watch the battery level tick down when it gets to that. Uh, I can kill a, uh, Gary Hub says I can kill a full charge in about 20 minutes of GB. There you go. Uh, pretty, pretty fun. Um, <laughs> don't forget the magnetic antenna. Uh, and Gary gets the 20% and 10% one minute apart. Yeah, when it flashes up and it's like low battery warning and you're like, ah, go away. And then it says, no, seriously, low battery warning. And then it's 10%. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, don't, don't leave it in the car, by the way. Don't leave your phone in the car. And uh, yeah, don't try not to get it in direct sunlight because yeah, you will get that warning. It's not good for it. And uh, it, luckily it saves you from yourself. As frustrated as I get that it, it reduces. So when you're using a phone and you're outside, it'll start going slower. So it'll get really clunky. And that's just because it's winding down. It's overheating. So it's winding down the processor speed and not letting you do more stuff that's going to cause damage. And then eventually it says, nah, you're done. And the little, uh, the little thermometer, red thermometer screen comes on. If you've never seen it before, uh, what does it look like? I, I should be able to find a photo of it. I've definitely taken a photo when I've got it, but let's see if we can go iOS overheat screen. I wonder if it's, uh, I wonder if I can get there. Temperature. I think it's, uh, I think it's this one here. Yeah, there you go. So if you've never seen it before, it looks like this. You get this little thing symbol here. It says iPhone needs to cool down before you can use it. And you can slide for an emergency to try and override it. Don't do that. Just uh, put it somewhere as cool as possible. I um, I always recommend carrying a six pack of beer in your bag at all times. That way you can just stick it under your six. No, but I, honestly, I have actually had to do that before where I've had to get an ice pack. I'd have to come home and get an ice pack, wrap it in the tea towel, and then just kind of put my phone on top of that and just basically cool its loins for a, a little while before it came back to life. So there you go. Uh, we'll see if there's any other questions here. Uh, thank you to Original Original Native. I like that. I like some of the names that we have uh, in the community here. What was the one? There was um, Professional Hater and Original Native. Uh, I like all of these. Uh, some people have got much cl more clever names than, you know, Pete Johns or Studio Live today. Uh, let's uh, continue on. I think we've pretty much covered everything that I wanted to cover. I'll just see if we have any fun, uh, any final questions that we have here. <laughs> Celine says, yes, we see that rarely in the UK. Yeah. For our UK friends, I don't know, is there an equivalent where your phone freezes? Uh, tech's usually okay with cold. It's usually not so okay with hot. In fact, some tech, if you want to preserve it, uh, putting it in the freezer can actually help. Unless you put it under the ice cream and it melts onto it. That's never a good thing. Uh, Joe also says in the frozen north, it gets too cold. Uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I've never seen it get too cold. So we'll see that. And uh, don't, don't mind the heat. It's 12 degrees Celsius below zero. <laughs> yeah, a shout out to everyone. Uh, I know we're in February here. So it's the middle of summer for us, but it's in the, the winter time for many folks. I know in Canada, the UK, the US, a lot of folks are having some pretty cold times. So uh, yeah, please stay safe and stay warm and do all of those things. I was speaking to someone today uh, in the US over in uh, New England who raises chickens. And she was talking about, um, yeah, we're talking about keeping the chickens warm. <laughs> and it's something we, uh, we didn't, uh, I did, never really thought about. All right, let's summarize. Let's bring it all home together. So the phone is still doing its thing. Uh, let's just briefly review what we've talked about here today. If you want to find out all the information I have about iPhones, head over to studiolivetoday.com slash iPhone. That's my complete iPhone guide. But remember you do not need to buy the latest and the greatest. I have made some of my best music on my iPad Air 2, my iPhone 6S, my iPhone 5S. Heck, when I started this channel, I was using an iPhone 4S with a 30-pin adapter. That's how, that's how long I've been using iOS to create. And, uh, well, actually, there was much more modern stuff then, but I just didn't own it, and that's totally fine. Create right now with what you've got. But if you are considering upgrading, keep in mind your budget, so you need to know what you want to spend and what you can afford to spend. Screen size is important. Size does matter when it comes to screens. Think about the fact you'll be looking at this thing a lot. Think about your operation. Can you operate it one-handed? Do you need to use two hands on there? Do you want to go for something smaller like the Mini or something like the Pro Max because you've got giant hands and you want to feel like you're really in control? Think about your processor. So with the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, they're using the same processor, both the A14 Bionic, and as you go back, you've got the A13, A12. So every generation is going to be a little bit quicker and snappier when it comes to using multiple applications and switching up between them. Related to that is RAM, so check out the memory. The the newer the iPhone 12s have four gigabytes, the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max have six gigabytes of RAM. It just means if you're running multiple applications, music creation apps, plugins, other apps in the background, it's gonna make life a lot smoother for you with that. And then finally, your storage space. So if you wanna save yourself some hassles and some headaches and some constant transferring of data, see what your budget can afford, but I'd recommend 128, 256, or even up to 512, 
if you're going to start introducing a lot of video production along with your audio production. So there you go. That is going to do it for this one. Thank you for those who are here live. If you're watching on the replay and you have comments about this, drop them down below as well. There's heaps more videos here on the channel about creating music on your iPhone, your iPad, your other devices. So I do wish uh, you all the best with your creative endeavors. And you can, of course, just head to studiolivestoday.com for all the ways to get in touch with me and all of the videos here on the channel. As we say at the end of each and every show, please be kind to yourselves, be kind to others, and keep creating. And if you're here live, join me right here, right here. In 15 minutes, we'll be taking a look at some vocal recording in GarageBand. If you're in the future, that video will be linked right there. You can watch that one straight away and see how we go about using our iOS devices to create music. Thanks for being here, folks, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.